Dixieville Paint Facebook and Instagram pages. My name is Brandy. I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy and I am a Dixieville Paint brand ambassador and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening. So if this is your first time, welcome. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it always feels like the first time, doesn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> if it's your first time watching Welcome. We're super happy to have you. You guys pop on and let us know where you're watching from. I have a few fun things planned for us tonight. We're going to do a whole bunch of different stuff. So, um, but the first thing that I'm going to do, oh, you guys, my husband, Sean is here behind the camera too. So, uh, feel free to pop on and ask your questions and I will try to cover as many as I can in the live and whatever we don't get to all. I do watch them back and I try to answer those um, afterwards. If you tag me, I'm more likely to see them too. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do tonight is actually we are going to paint some leather. Okay, you guys, these are my Ugg boots, okay? I have several pairs of Uggs. Can you hand me that stool back there, the red oh, stool? Yeah, I have several this pairs of Uggs. In fact, I'm going to show you this other pair. Um, and I paint them. And I paint them without hesitation. It works great. I will tell you how old some of these are and how well they hold up. So can you see down here if I work on here? Oh my God. I know. How do you do this I know. To me? I'm sorry. Okay, I first want to introduce you to this pair, which is the first pair that I ever painted. And these are absolutely 100% my painting boots. When the weather starts getting cold, um, this is what I wear to paint in. Honestly, they, they kind of have sentimental value now. I feel like I feel like these are probably one of my most valuable works at this point. So I wear these all the time. I have worn these for painting in the winter since I started painting. Girl, hold on. I like the fact that if I put the camera up further. It makes me look thin. <laughs> well, <laughs> that you're like looking up at the stars. Look yeah, super like... tiny. <laughs> um, anyway, I painted these and I don't bother touching them up because clearly I get paint on them. But my point was I want to show you guys how soft they stay and how it wears. So I'm going to show you guys up close on camera kind of how this wears. I mean, it's got tons of paint on it, but they're super soft and touchable. So I already have a question from the peanut gallery. Gary wants to know if we have to be PC. Yes. Like we, Pacific this Coast. Is, this is a family show, you guys. This is a family show. Pretend your kids are watching. Okay. So other my than kids that, like to that's watch our rule. Yeah. <laughs> actually, my kids really do, do watch yeah. these. So, okay. So the ones that I'm going to paint are actually these. And I painted these before. I painted these for the first time about, I don't know, three years ago probably because it was when we first moved to our house um, and they needed a touch up so I'm going to show you the process that I go through to paint my boots and this is exactly the same process I would go through to paint any kind of leather um, these were suede okay so these were suede which has a brush texture but when I paint them they're going to feel like a uh, a regular leather not a suede leather but they're going to feel like a regular leather when I'm done so I'm going to put a coat of paint on, on this and they were already black. I'm going to keep them black. I just wanted to, they get faded. If you have Ugg boots or you know what suede looks like, it starts to fade. It looks worn. Um, and so I want them to just be a more, uh, a fresher looking black. Gary, you're absolutely right. I paint my boots too. Yes. Uh, you want to go grab my brown boots that are in the, in mommy, daddy closet? I'm going to send a child on an errand. Okay. So when I paint fabric, I always use water. Um, and the suede has texture in it. And so you want to use the water so that it kind of absorbs the paint into those little fibers. So I'm going to use, uh, and I'm just going to apply it with my Dixie Belle Mini. Um, and I'm going to put, this is caviar. This is Dixie Belle caviar, which is our true black. And I'm going to use some water on here and I'm just going to coat them. Now, this is a great way to refresh these because these boots are not cheap. These are what, 200 plus dollars new. And uh, this pair I didn't buy new. Um, actually, where did I get these? Uh, someone gave these to me. And they, but they were in really good condition, but they faded because I wear them. Do you uh, clean the boots first? Um, yeah, you do want to make sure. Just give it a good brushing. You don't want to have any like 
you know, crusty spots in your suede or even your regular leather. If you've got oils or anything on it, make sure you remove those first. What if like my boots, I have a lot of rhinestones on them. <laughs> You'll definitely want to tape, tape those off. They sound lovely. <laughs> it's the rhinestone cowboy. So I just, it's pretty easy. I just, I really do just use water so that it absorbs into the fibers. And I make sure that I get into all the seams and stuff. This is my second coat. So I'm going to do, I do two coats. I'm going to do two coats on these. And then I'll show you afterwards how I seal it. My son's bringing me another pair. I, I like my Ugg boots. What can I say? They keep my feet super warm. Okay. Yeah. Are you painting those? No, these are actually my newest pair. And I like, I really like these. But this, I'm, I wanted to show you guys these because this is what the black was before I got to it. It was a suede. So you can see the texture. They're exactly the same boot, but this is the brown version. That's the black. By the time I'm done, this is going to look like a true leather. It will lose the suede texture but it's still very soft and supple and um, it's just gonna feel like a leather. Hold on, let me go get my bedazzler. <laughs> oh my gosh. What who if had, I just stand across had, the room and throw glitter at them? Who had a stick? bedazzler? Well, I, I actually did wax. What? I, I, I waxed a section of one of these earlier and I didn't realize my brush had some um, silver leafing on. So I oh, do have yeah. one that's a little bedazzled accidentally. Oh, yeah. Accidentally bedazzled. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. All right. So, um, and just work your paint in until you get it into all the fibers of that suede. Get it, make sure you cover all the seams. I don't want to cover the logo because I actually want people to know that like, these are, these are real. These are legit. Okay, and then I'll let this dry. It dries pretty quickly because the fabric kind of soaks up the paint. It almost makes the paint like a dye. You're using your paint like a dye to dye the leather, okay? So I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna come over here to this one. The, the other one already has a coat on it that is dry. So those boots, are they made for walking? <laughs> and that's just what they'll do <laughs> we're so cool All sorry right. Ashton you got, you got these he is no parents my son's sitting here by the way um okay so this is what they look like after it's dry and it's still flexible it's not it doesn't crack or anything you guys see the flex you know it still has these were worn so they still have like the wrinkles and stuff in it but I want to soften them even more and so what I like to use on these I'm going to dry my stool off because it has some water on there. I'm going to use Besting Wax. Where's my Besting Wax? Come on. I would use it if I could find it. What's this over here? Yeah, that'll work. I'll use, <laughs> yeah. I'll use that. I'll use that Besting Wax. All right, that's Big Mama's. That one? That's Big Mama's butter, but that one is Besting oh, Wax. Oh, see, I got my yeah. glasses on. I... Can you hand me the glasses. brush? That brush, too. This one? Yeah. Would you guys see that? Ooh, wow. I thought for sure that was not going to go right. Yeah. All right. So this is Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax and it's in black. And I like to use black wax over black paint. I want to keep it really nice and sharp and crisp and black. And then I'm just going to use a little tiny brush. This is just a little tiny natural bristle, uh, really inexpensive craft store brush. And I'm going to massage my black wax in. If you were going to throw this, not literally massage. throw it. But if you were going to put it on a couch, would yes. you use water with it? I, I would. I would. I, yeah, I, I actually just tried a little. A little <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because Gary's right there with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I really am. I did. I actually Hold just, back. I actually just tried a little section of my couch, like a hidden a little corner that um, where the leather had started to wear, and I was really curious how it would work. And so I did. I used a little bit of. Um, a little bit of water because I just wanted a thin coat just enough to kind of freshen up the color um, and then I just used a wax over the top of it and it actually looks it looks pretty darn good so uh, you know I don't know if I want to I'm not going to commit to my whole couch but it was definitely a way to touch up we have leather sofas um, it was definitely a way to touch up and I just tried it in a little hidden section so flip your cushion over if you want to try it and get your now the other thing I had to do was mix the color just right mine ended up being a mix of coffee bean and rusty nail to get that brown leather look 
Well, I mean, if I gotta flip my cushion, I'm just gonna flip the cushion. <laughs> well, I mean, it. Well, but our couch, you can't. Because ours don't have the full. It's not full leather on the other side. It's only like a like a enough that it doesn't show underneath. But the whole underside is not leather, so it doesn't allow me to just flip the cushion. They're from Costco, and they. I mean, they've been good couches, but there are a few spots that just on the corners, like on the corners, you know how leather just kind of wears naturally. So I was just curious, but I did try it. I did use water. It's basically the same process, even though our couches are not suede, they're regular leather. So I'm just gonna work this besting wax into my fabric. Gary, I struggle every day. The struggle is real. And I'm just gonna do, I'll just do the front of it, just so I can show you guys. Um, uh oh, the, Leah's the other, on. Hi, Leah. The other thing I'll say about doing this is it actually makes these, if you guys have ever owned these boots, you have to waterproof them like every winter to keep them nice. This actually <laughs> makes them more waterproof than any waterproof where I've put on my Ugg boots. So um, they actually wear really well like this. Um, now, I did do this same pair. I painted these about three years ago. It lasts about three years, and I just felt like it started fading again. I, I waxed them as needed, and you just wax them like, um, gosh, if you, if you own a leather coat or something, sometimes you just need to apply a wax just to soften it a little bit. Even my couches in our house, I, I, you know, I don't use wax. I actually use Big Mama's Butter on them. So those, were they originally that. black? They were originally black. And how long have faded. you had them? I mean, that's a big question. Two days? Three no, days? No, I've had these like, a, at few, least five years, years right? at least five years. Well, I painted them for the first time three years ago, but I'd had them for a few years before that too. I can't tell you exactly when I got them. Oh, five to seven years ago. So, I mean, they're, they're, hold, they're holding on tight, you guys. And I just do this. I can keep refreshing them and they'll stay looking pretty darn good. Um, okay. The other option that I like to use on, on this after you do your paint, even after you do your um, besting wax, is a little bit of Big Mama's Butter because it adds a little bit of sheen, a little bit of smell, and it's an oil. And you can put it over your besting wax. You can use oil over water. You cannot use water over oil. Oh, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Leah's got the pressing question. What? Where's Bob? No. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Oh, Leah, yeah. come on now. I thought we were friends. Yeah. I thought we were friends. Let's bring it on out of the woodwork. <laughs> um, it's truly one of those things that I don't talk about because it's a shame thing. So for the sake of my pride, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. It's a lot. What does it start with? <laughs> it's, is it three digits or it's two? It's three digits. <laughs> it's three digits. What? And it starts with a two. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Don't go in the closet. Don't go. I promise you, you don't want to. <laughs> I really like shoes. Holy shnikes. Okay, so I put the wax on there, and then I put a little bit of Big Mama's Butter, and then I kind of buff it. I'm still stuck on the number. <laughs> what are, what are we doing today? Do See, you guys, if I don't point it out, I mean, he goes into the same closet I do every single day. And but I don't notice. pay attention to your shoes. You never notice because they're all in like nice racks. And I you do don't, know. You know, you don't have any. At this point, I'm to the point where it's so many that it's one in, one out. Like I can't add. If one's coming in, one's got to go. Although I didn't do that last night. I think it's a one for five. <laughs> one goes in, five go out. Um, so I just I can't put, wait for I just you to put go a little vacation. bit of the Big Mama's Butter over the wax, and then I buffed it a little bit, and it gives it a little bit of sheen. I kind of like the Big Mama's Butter on there. Plus, they smell really good. And then my theory is that with the little bit of oil on there, these are going to repel water. Like if I go out in the rain, it will repel water really well. Well, Leah's got a point. Well, Leah just won't stop. <laughs> Leah, don't 264? you 264? Don't you have something else to do? I or 46? Thought were, I thought you were going out of town. You should really get in the car now. <laughs> now, Leah. <laughs> um, gosh, when why, I... why do you want this to be a forever <laughs> life? <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it. I, I did a little bit of the black wax, and then I put the Big Mama's Butter over that for the sheen and the smell and the oil. And now I'm going to buff it away. And I can wear these out in the rain. 
And these can be my practical ones. And these are the ones that I actually have to protect because they're suede and suede like you can't even breathe on it wrong or it freaks out. Did you just look at my suede? No. See, you know what, what I what just happened. You know what, what I just happened? realized? By your, your own admission, and it's on video. <laughs> Two pairs is all you need. <laughs> Is, is one of them these? No, no. Is one of them these? Okay, so three. I'll be generous. <laughs> yeah, I can have my paper. I'm going to be a few minutes. I need some boxes. Okay, well, I actually I actually just got a pair of tennis shoes because I was like, I really just need to throw these away. They're really sad. And I got a pair of tennis shoes. I'm like, I hate the tennis shoes. I hate painting in them. I would way rather wear painting boots. So, anyway. All right, so I feel like these are nice and fresh and up. <laughs> They've got the little bit of um, sheen. This is just the painted version that's still drying. And then this is the one that has the wax and the butter on it. This is a little more dry, more matte feeling. So just, it adds a like a softness to the paint. Let's see if I can show you guys side by side. Oh, Sorry. we're strengthening relationships. Gary, did you see? <laughs> Molly might have the same amount. <laughs> oh, does she? Hello. Does she? Oh, I knew I loved Molly. All right, you guys, so that is how I maintain my boots. And, um, you know, I, I chose to repaint them. I probably could have just re-waxed them again, but I, I wanted to freshen up the color. So, you know, no harm, no foul. It freshened them up. They look way better than they did. I'll tell you that right now. All right, you guys want to paint some furniture tonight? Oh, we'll do that, back. too. We I do that here, too. was Lori that mentioned. What? Snitches get stitches. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Got a couple going. <laughs> yeah, Leah. Uh-huh. Leah's uh -huh. on my list. Well, and maybe <laughs> Leah may have done a video live earlier in reference to some brushes that you might be missing, if it's true. Maybe uh, she has them. Is that my brushes? Am I missing brushes? I don't know. Oh, I labeled them all, too. Did I? Did I like, <sighs> no, I came home with some. She may be joking. I don't know. I'm going to go watch it. I'll watch it. Forget relationships. Uh, We're forging problems. <laughs> okay, so now this is the piece that I'm working on right here. And I've got my drawers in all wonky because I don't want them on the glides. These are the glides that once you snap them in, they have like prongs. And I've got to try to get them back out again. So I, I don't want them in there on purpose. I just set them in the piece just to hold it so you can see. So that is why they look like a hot mess. They're not broken. They just have the really nice glides that like have the tabs on the side. You guys know what I'm talking about? Nope. Okay, I don't want to deal with them. All right, so the color that I'm putting on this piece is Colonel Mustard, but it's a Colonel Mustard mix. And I mix Colonel Mustard pretty much every time I use it because Colonel Mustard's a little loud. Like, he's a loud guy. He's kind of, I feel like he's kind of screaming at me. What was that for? I think that's uh, for Noah. We have a child getting picked up. Sorry, guys. Here, don't you hear a car in the background. Okay, so Colonel Mustard's pretty bold. It's a bold yellow, and I like to mute it to like a curry colored yellow. Um, and there's different colors you can use to tint your Colonel Mustard. For this one, I'm gonna use Gravel Road, and I chose Gravel Road. Let's see if I can, if I can get it to show you guys, because when you thin Gravel Road out, it actually has a lot of brown undertones in it. And this uh, thinning your paint out is a good way that you can kind of see what colors are in there. If you thin your paint out, it will tell you it looks pretty brown when you thin gravel road out, which is kind of funny. It's a it's got a lot of browns in there. So I'm going to choose to uh, tint my kernel mustard with some gravel road. So when I mix this, I'm going to show you a couple things. When I made this mixture, gravel road overpowers kernel mustard really quickly. So this is not a 50 50 mixture. It's it's a lot of kernel mustard and a little tiny drop of gravel road is all you need to tint. So this is not a 50-50 mixture that I'm using. Even that little drop was too much. It, it will tint really quickly. The colors that I like to use to make uh, tints to Colonel Mustard, a few options. I like chocolate. I like collard greens. Uh, this one here, which is Gravel Road, they all end up pretty similar. I did a side-by-side -side for the video that I'm going to put out on this. You're Thanks a lot, guys. Your... No, Thanks nobody said anything, but you just happen to be dealing with your plate. So this is my palette. Do I look? Do we look the same? Do we have... It's the hair. It's the hair, right? Okay, so let me show this now side-by-side -side with actual Colonel Mustard.
and you'll be able to see what just that little bit of tinting, how it changes the color. Okay, this is full blown kernel mustard and this is my tinted version that I'm using on this piece. So I mix this in a larger quantity just to the tint that I wanted, but just keep in mind you need to use very little of your darker color. It's going to overpower that yellow really quickly. It's not a 50-50 mixture. It's like 90% or kernel mustard and like 10% gravel road, if even that. I would doubt it's even that because it, it tints it so quickly. So I did that and I mixed it into this full container. So I have plenty. I usually over mix my paint anytime I need to use a mixture. And I, I mix kernel mustard probably more than I use it straight. I use it mixed. So I just mix it in really large quantities and I always have it on hand because I really like kernel mustard when it's tinted. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paint these drawers. Can you give me a sanding sponge? Um, my... Walk out. Do I, walk out? <laughs> I actually should feel bad, you guys. Sean threw his back out. What Maybe were you a doing? Rollout. Oh, you were lifting that cart into my sister's truck. Oh, uh, top drawer. Any any sanding sponge, I don't know. Really any. Care. Just just a ninja star. Just a semi abrasive. Oh come on! That was a terrible throw. Oh. Okay. One thing I will say about this kernel mustard mix is usually I can get full coverage in two coats. This one is going to take me three coats. So what we're doing tonight is actually my third coat with this color. Um, and that just happens with certain colors. So this was a dark wood. I scuff sanded. It did, I didn't use a primer. The alternative would be that I could have probably used a primer and done it in two coats. But either way, it ends up being a coat of primer, two coats of paint, or three coats of paint. Still three coats no matter what I do. So on this one, it doesn't have a primer underneath. I scuff sanded. Um, it's not a bleeder. It's not slick. So there are definitely situations when you can just paint right onto your furniture and you don't need a primer. So for all the times we do need a primer, there are plenty that we don't too. And this was definitely one of them. If you want to see what the surface looks like before, I posted a before picture of this piece on my page tonight at Brush by Brandy. Okay, so this, like I said, this is going to be my third coat. I did one coat yesterday. I did um, one coat earlier today, and this is going to be my third coat. And it's basically just been a repeat um, every time. Each time I'm just repeating myself. Yeah, you are. I always feel like I am. Except this is going to be my third and final. So this will be the one that I really try to get perfect. Up to this point, I've just been like, at eh, close enough, like it'll get there. But this is the one that I actually need to pay attention to. So the brushes that I have out, I have out, I'm going to use two of my Dixie Bell Minis. I'm going to use my Best Dang brush. I have out an oval medium. And I also have out a um, premium chip brush. And I think I'm going to use this just to add some like shading into the these far corners here. Very shady. And I'm going to use for shading, I'm going to use my gravel road because it's already in my mixture. So it's going to coordinate really well. And I'm just going to use it for shading. All right. So I gave my surface a light sanding just using my Dixie Bell sanding sponge. And then I just tacked off the dust with a damp cloth. So now it's super soft and smooth. And I just really want to refine this coat. So I'm going to take my Dixie Bell mini a tiny bit of water on this one. Not a lot. And I'm going to dampen my surface. And I'm just dampening the surface just so my brush flies over it a little bit easier. And I'm going to even dampen it even more. So I'm going to basically outline the outsides of this drawer in my kernel mustard mix. This is kernel mustard tinted with gravel road. And I'm going to do it in the basic framework that I have on here, which is I've got a highlight in the middle. The outsides are my um, kernel mustard mix. And in a second, we will add our, our other colors. What was the lighter color? Uh, the lighter color that I'm going to use is drop cloth. So I've got three colors on here. I'm going to end up at three colors, kernel mustard, gravel road, and drop cloth. Um, so I have a history with mustard and this, this piece is actually inspired by one of those mustard pieces. I was challenged a few years ago to do a piece in a color that really like 
intimidated me and it was yellow. At the time I was like, oh, yellows do terrible for me. I don't know. And I did a piece in kernel mustard um, in a blend like this and it's still in my house because it's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done. And so I appreciate that piece because it was a challenge to me uh, to go outside my comfort zone and it ended up being one of my favorite pieces. I love that I kept it. I'm super glad I kept it. Um, good things happen outside your comfort zone, guys. All right, so I basically framed out this little spot in the middle and that is where my drop cloth is gonna go. So I'm opening Dixie Belle drop cloth, which is not a pure white, it's a nice creamy white. And I'm gonna take a second brush and I'm gonna give myself basically a stripe. Oh, you know, if it's true, Sheila said she painted with Dawn this week. Yeah, she did. Sheila, you made some awesome projects. Honestly, you need to go post them. Sheila sent me her projects and that, that apron, you need to show, uh, did you show Leah your uh, succulent box? You need to show that to Leah. Because that was her class. Okay, and then I'm just using my besting brush and I'm going to soften that. But you're going to notice I kind of made that white go away. You probably don't see it very much on camera. In person, I can tell it's there very subtly. But that's okay, because I'm just going to come freshen it up in the center. And now I've softened the edges out. I don't want this to be pure drop cloth in the center. I want it to be just a lighter shade of my yellow. So I'm using the brush for my drop cloth and I'm just brushing them together because it had barely any paint on it. But then I'm gonna come back with my oval medium and I'm just gonna feather these two together on the edges. Narrow drawers like this I think are harder because I don't want it to look like a stripe down the middle. So I just be really cautious that I don't end up with that stripe effect. I'm gonna turn this so I can look at it straight on instead of kind of from the side. Because sometimes your light hits it weird from different angles. So just look at your piece from different angles sometimes. I feel like I want it to go a little bit further out. So I'm just going to come back with my brush with a little bit of drop cloth on it. All right. So I want the centers of these drawers to be nice and light. It'll fade out as it gets to the edges. Got a brush hair in there. I'm going to pull that guy out. I am going to tack this brush off because it's getting a little muddy. And then I'm going to do something else on the edges. I'm going to pure up my kernel mustard a little bit because I want them to stay. It must be from that besting brush. I want them to stay really nice and yellow on the very outer edges. So I just am going to pure that up just a little bit wherever it got a little muddy and then smooth that back in too. Give myself a little bit of water and then I'm just going to go over this one time with my besting brush. What do you intend to do with the top? Uh, I don't know yet. So my customer was kind of unsure if she wanted a wood stain top. I ended up having to sand it because it had scratches and stuff in it. So I took it down to the bare wood, but I'm not sure if I'm going to paint it or not yet. And I feel like I'm going to kind of wait and see how this is looking. And then I can decide it's got a wood tone up there and then I can decide if I want to paint it or not. I had to sand it no matter what. So I'm not sure yet. It really, this is a custom order. Um, so I'm not sure. She kind of gets to make the decision, but I'll, I'll come with a recommendation for how I'm feeling, depending on what it's looking like. And I'm not sure yet. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of gravel road and I'm doing it on my um, premium chip brush. I'll show you guys how much I'm getting. Just the very tips of the bristles. I'm trying to get it pretty evenly and I'm choosing the premium chip brush because it's got this really nice narrow profile and I just want to use this in a little line just here on my outer edges. 
I'm just going to darken these outer edges a tiny bit, but I don't want it to be a lot. Okay, so this is my um, oval medium, and I'm just going to... So ideally, what I would probably recommend is to either do these last, do these outer edges last, or have an oval medium that is for this because it's going to put that gravel road on. And then if I'm coming and doing the white, it's going to put that in that in the center. So either have two of these oval mediums or do this part last. All right. So I just darken just those corners. It looks like it's a wax, but it's actually done with paint. All right. Let's see if I can pull this middle drawer out. Because remember, these are not on the glides. I know they're not on the glides. I don't want them on the glides. So I'm going to pull this out and we'll do the second one, but this one cannot push in because it's not on the glides. Um, so I'm going to repeat the process. We'll do this, uh, the same process again. And here's where the challenge comes. I recommend doing these all at one time. If you got multiple drawers, because if I walk away and I try to come back and do this one, the chances of getting it to match this first one are slim to none. Okay. So same thing. I already sanded this drawer. I tacked off my dust. I'm going to add a layer of water on there just so my paint glides over the top easier. This one's going to want to wobble, of course. I'm going to frame out my basic shape. So this is really just a two color blend. I, you know, I've got a, a mix, so I am using three colors, but this is a basic two color blend. And then I'm just shading with that third color, which is completely optional. And that could also be done with waxes. I could darken the corners with waxes. I'm still going to darken the corners with waxes. I just, um, I like the, you get kind of a more saturated look if I do it with paint underneath in a dark color and then put the dark waxes over top. So that's my intent there. Okay, so I've got a nice layer of kernel mustard around the edges that gave me some paint to play with. I don't want it to dry. I'm gonna keep it wet. So I just added a little bit of water this one is a wider drawer here. So whereas this one I just did kind of a stripe, this one has got to be a little bit wider because the drawer is a different size. <clears throat> when I'm brushing the white in, I don't worry about getting that yellow over the top. If it gets too much yellow, I can come back with a little bit of the white and just pure it back up. but I don't want any of this pure white. It would be too stark of a contrast. I want it to just be a softer yellow. So I kind of blend it on my piece. I'm gonna mix a custom color on my piece. All right, I'm gonna turn this so I can look at it straight on and see if I'm kind of even. Okay. I'm gonna get a little bit more drop cloth on my brush, a little tiny bit. I don't want, uh, too much so I'm going to lay it off on my rag even and I'm just going to lighten up this very center part my paint is kind of starting to set up a little bit it's a little bit tacky it's not super wet and then out here I'm going to clean up my kernel mustard and get that back to pure kernel mustard anywhere that I might have gotten the white out further than I wanted to. All right, and then I'm going to take my oval medium, soften where those two meet up. I, I use a very soft hand, a very soft hand. I have a very light hand, and I'm just kind of wisping the tips of my brush just to so feather those edges together. Take you back a step when you're going through coats as far as grit of sandpaper. Yes. What grit would you say that is as far as your sanding sponge? The sanding sponges from Dixieville are a 220 grit, but some of mine are pretty old and when they age, they just some get like even 400. finer mm -hmm. and that's okay. I still really like them for sanding in between coats. I wash them out and, and use them over and over and over again, but they start out as a 220 grit. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my gravel road and I'm gonna darken these edges again.
So I just kind of make a stripe out here, get a little bit more paint. And I'm using this, this um, premium chip brush because it's got that nice narrow profile on it. So I can get it right just into that corner and not out much further because that's really all I want it for. Oops, I'm gonna use my oval medium. And then I'm just gonna feather these two colors together. This is my oval medium brush, it's a dry. I'm just using the moisture from the paint here because I had freshened up that, um... sorry for it's, this, is, this is one of the bobbin. Um, I had freshened up this uh, kernel mustard a little bit. Over here, I feel like it's a little too dry. Just a mist, just enough that I can have a little bit of moisture to work with is all I added there. I don't want to make it soupy, guys. If it gets soupy, it ends up being really hard to work with. And I'm just going to work that in until I got this, I have this nice shaded edge. Okay. So that's kind of my plan. And I can push that guy back in. That guy's not going anywhere. Oh, I'm out of time. So I have one more drawer to do. Seeing a spot right here. Not sure if I like how the bottom of this looks. But I'm probably at one of those points where I should have walked away and not touched it. You know those points, right? <laughs> but I touch it anyways. Oh, I know those. Yeah, yeah. yeah very those are well. the ones that I it's come It's usually in, about I come 1 a.m. Yeah. yeah, and I'm super mad about something. Yep. Sean just doesn't even ask. He knows I tried to fix something. All right. So I have one more drawer to do, but I'm at kind of time. So this is where I'm going with this one. Um, I, there will be a full video on this piece, but I'm gonna bring out like this guy here with some waxes, some dark waxes around the edges. It's gonna be gorgeous. This piece has a lot of detail and my sides also have the same shading with the drop cloth and the kernel mustard mix. Um, so, and then I'll add some, some dark waxes. So good guys, it's so good. All right, so that was cool. We got a lot done tonight. Um, so tonight we painted my, uh, my suede Ugg boots. I painted them in Dixie Belle caviar and then I put some um, best stain wax on them and then Big Mama's butter over top for a little bit of sheen. They're super soft and they smell super good. Probably going to sleep with them tonight. Okay. Yeah. We're probably going to cuddle. That's cool. So. <laughs> I can't tell from the couch. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, I have a video coming out tomorrow on my YouTube channel. Every Friday, you guys get a new full tutorial on there. So I have a cool piece coming out that's got some blending and some stenciling and gilding waxes on there. It's a really pretty blend. I don't too. like the complex, so I got to get him in there. <laughs> He's the star of the show. Um, you can use the link above to find anything I used in this video. Um, my colors tonight were Kernel Mustard, Drop Cloth, and... Uh, gravel road and then I use caviar on my boots. You can also use that link though to find your local retailer Which are shops in your area that carry the paints if you want to go in and check anything out um, There's a find your retailer function You can enter input your zip code and it will tell you who's in your area that carries the paint. So check that out you guys um, Anyway, uh, I'm gonna sign off you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging out tonight We'll see you great. guys next Thursday